Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Carlijn, but my friends call me Car. I love to travel and want to share my trips and adventures with you all on this vlog. Just had a very nice breakfast in this place called Number Four. Um, uh, and in a little bit, we're gonna go to a market, which I keep forgetting the name of, but I'll, I'll tell you in a little bit. I'll tell you when I'm there. <laughs> Amea Yokocho, or Amiyoko, is a bustling outdoor and indoor market with over 400 shops located around and under the elevated Yamanote train line. Post-World War II, a black market emerged here offering substitutes for regulated sugar, such as candy made from sweet potatoes. The black market thrived and soon hundreds of candy shops lined the area, earning it the nickname Candy Store Alley. Nowadays you can buy fruits, vegetables, seafood, clothes and many other things. Right in between the market is the Marishiten Tokudashi Temple, a Buddhist temple that worships Marisi, the goddess of dawn, and in many forms associated with light and the sun. In this market it's really all about negotiation and it's an excellent place to find a good bargain. Ameyoko is also a great place to have some typical Japanese treats such as takoyaki or yakitori with a grab and go vibe from the different sidewalk eateries. It's hot as balls. Uh, honestly our foreheads are like shimmery, I don't think we should put this in the vlog. Shiny! We're in the Ameya Yokocho market. You can see like a very vibrant. Well, I mean, it doesn't seem so vibrant, but there's a lot of people actually. Uh, but I guess it's more lively and early in the morning. So basically, you can buy anything here shoes, bags, brands, um, lots of fish, fruits, uh, food. It's like bazaar type style, yeah. It's... And did you see the temple? I did, I did. And also, there's a railway right there. Here are the trains passing. Underneath the train tracks and also part of the market, you will find dozens of small shops selling mostly jewelry, souvenirs, clothing, and some other questionable things. I've been meaning to look for a Kalashnikov, so. You suddenly find. Kang <laughs> Dardidon car. It's like a Kang like Dardidon. Where is that? Back. Oh. <laughs> A grenade thrower. And also a tearing so you have to make some money for me. Because there's actual bullets here. We're buying a lot of things, so we need more luggage space. So now we got our suitcase. I was thinking one of these back, perhaps. Now if we buy two of those, one on the back, one on the front. Aww. <laughs> After we got our new suitcase and supplied it with guns, fish and other knickknacks, we strolled over to Weno Park. And the baby was also pulling his weight. This is how safe Japan is. There's just like Louis Vuitton bags and all sorts. Waiting outside the cafe. Wow. I know. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. In Japan. And here, a little camera of the people inside the lift. Freaking fascinating. Bueno Park is a large public park and is one of the most famous and popular parks in the city. The park was established in 1873 and covers a huge area providing a green oasis in the midst of the bustling city. Bueno Park is home to several important museums including the Tokyo National Museum, the National Museum of Nature and Science and the Tokyo Metropolitan Art Museum. In addition, the park features its beautiful and famous cherry blossom. We're in Bueno Park right now for a beautiful walk. The sound you're hearing is this luggage and lots of people enjoying the scenery and the quietness. And there I come with the luggage, the noise maker. If people thought they were gonna have a relaxing day in the park, well, they were wrong. After a lovely walk in Weno Park, we made our way to the Nizu Shrine. This shrine is a definite must see. Inside this shrine are hundreds of vermilion tori gates, also known as Senbon Tori, which create a sort of tunnel you can walk through. This shrine dates back to 1705 and most extraordinarily survived the upcoming wars. Past the tori gates you will find the Komagomi Inari shrine, made completely out of stone. This shrine is also quite famous for its azalea flower hill, which colors up the grounds even more, and is symbol to the annual flower festival held here. There are also plenty of stalls selling different types of nuts or other typical Japanese snacks around here. Right. What a peaceful shrine! Yeah. <laughs> Say a puffer chest! Oh no, a cake! Oh, liquor! Yummy, Bufford! Oh. 
After we were all shrined out, we went back to the hotel for a quick change and then jetted off to the Team Lab Planet Museum. Also, you must book your tickets to this museum way in advance as it sells out really, really quickly. I feel at home. <laughs> we're off to uh, the museum Planet Lab. This is a really our first museum. Our first museum. <laughs> yeah, well, shameful. I know that sounds that is shameful. Though. That is really shameful. But it's an amazing museum. It has six different rooms, and they're all uh, interactive rooms. <laughs> Here we're cruising through Ginza District, Tokyo's most glamorous and upmarket shopping district. To give you an idea, one square meter of ground in this area is worth over 10 million yen, making it the most expensive real estate in Japan. Welcome to Team Lab Planets Tokyo. With your entire body, immerse, perceive, and become one with the art. Your feet will get wet in some spaces. If you are wearing a skirt, your underwear may be visible. This room over here had massive <laughs> bean bags everywhere. It's tough to get out of here. <laughs> it's like a scene from zombies with all of these slow crawling people behind me. <laughs> Wow. I mean, this is very cool, I have to say. And there's koi fish swimming. I like the colors though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just wow, wow, wow. That's really all I can say about this museum. It was definitely a highlight of my trip in Tokyo. I loved the experience and we spent hours here. There's actually another Team Lab museum in Tokyo called Borderless, but unfortunately that one was closed. I've heard that one is stunning as well. Okay, we just finished um, Team Lab Planets. And it, and was, <laughs> it was it was incredible. There was one room that when we got up we were lying down and when we got up we couldn't walk straight. We couldn't walk straight, yeah. We, it was fascinating. That was actually maybe my favorite room. It kinda of made me emotional to be honest. Yeah, also. Um oh, so I didn't get emotional. <laughs> hey there guys, thanks for watching another episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe below and drop a comment if you can. I would really appreciate it. Ciao. Follow me. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs>